Can you imagine being buried alive, screaming in your coffin as you hear the dirt being piled on top of you? That's actually happened a bunch of times, with one modern story even including a perceived zombie threat. What an absolute nightmare. But what's perhaps even worse, can you imagine being buried alive when someone starts filling your veins with toxic embalming fluid, or if someone dissected some of your internal organs when you had not given up the ghost? We're certainly going to make you squirm a bit today in our collection of 13 terrifying tales. But let's start with a funeral story that contains a touch of comedy. Number 13. You've heard of wedding crashers, but we bet you've never heard of someone crashing their own funeral. That's exactly what an Australian woman named Noella Rukundo did in 2015. The story starts in 2004 when she emigrated from Burundi to Australia. There she met a guy from the Congo named Balenga Kalala. He fled to Australia after a rebel army killed his wife and daughter. The two got married and things seemed to be going well for a few years. They had three lovely children, but as more time passed, Balenga started to become very jealous. His wife was faithful, she'd always maintained her innocence, but he wouldn't believe her. The jealousy turned into rage and in 2015, when Noella went back to Burundi to her stepmother's funeral, he arranged for hitmen to kill her there. He paid $7,000, half of it to be paid when proof of the hit was sent to him. At some point during the funeral, he called her and said, why don't you go outside, you sound like you need some fresh air. That's when the hitmen were waiting. At gunpoint, they bundled her into a car and drove to a warehouse where they tied her to a chair and gagged her. But it seems during this time they had a change of heart. They didn't feel too good about killing a woman who had three kids. So they told her she was not going to die and also informed her how she'd ended up in the position. At first she didn't believe them. So they got Balanga on speakerphone and told him the job was done, they'd killed his wife. When Noella understood he had really hired them, she fainted on the spot. Back in Australia, Balenga put on the waterworks, telling everyone his wife had died in a tragic vehicle accident. Meanwhile, over in Burundi, the kidnappers collected the rest of the cash from Western Union and gave Noella the receipt as evidence. They then said, get out of the country now. She would need some help from her embassies to make that happen. A funeral was held for her in Melbourne and was attended by many members of the African community, each of them offering their condolences to the distraught husband, now a single parent. Noella was watching the whole thing from a distance. This is what she later told the BBC. When I got out of the car, he saw me straight away. He put his hands on his head and said, Is it my eyes? Is it a ghost? She walked up to him and chimed, Surprise, I'm still alive. His shock soon turned to regret when he was in handcuffs and told he was going to spend the next nine years in prison. We'll call that one of today's amusing tales, but as you'll soon see, some of these stories are not funny at all. Number 12. This one might make you question the ethics of the medical community, or at least the medical community at one particular hospital in India. On June 21, 2019, a 20-year-old man named Mohammed Farkhan was rushed to the hospital in Uttar Pradesh after suffering what the media said were injuries sustained during an accident. The young chap wasn't in a good way at all, and fixing him wasn't going to be cheap. His family paid for the best medical care money could buy at an expensive private hospital, hoping that the extra cash would save Farkhan's life. But as time went on, the bill started to look a little prohibitive. Then, when it reached 7 lakh, just under $10,000, the family told the hospital they'd run out of money. Okay, said the hospital, he's dead. It sounded a little suspicious to the family. But when they saw Farkhan, he didn't exactly look like he was in good shape. They took his body and prepared for the funeral. A day later, the hole was already dug and family members crowded around the body saying their teary goodbyes. And then it happened. Farkhan started looking a bit less dead. His brother told the media, devastated, we were preparing for the burial when some of us saw movement in his limbs. A doctor soon arrived on the scene and indeed Farkhan had a pulse and his reflexes were working fine. He wasn't dead at all. Now you have to ask, if he was so obviously alive, how come the hospital didn't know that? And was this a matter of them not wanting to take care of a guy whose family were no longer spending their life savings on the medical bills? The local chief medical officer said he would undertake an investigation, but the media didn't say how it went. We'd imagine if you were at the funeral in this next case, you'd come close to having a heart attack. Number 11. This story took place in Nakhon Si Tamarat in southern Thailand. The deceased was named Prapad Sanith Kanam, and his alleged death was what you might call grisly. He'd been walking down some railroad tracks and for some reason couldn't get out of the way of an incoming train. He was hit full on, his body mangled and his face splattered. When the cops arrived, they almost threw up their gang Kalwan. The victim was unrecognizable, but those hard-working Thai cops did what they do best and investigated the matter. Their conclusion was that the pile of meat and bones on the track was Prapad. Many people from the local village went to pay their respects, and as happened at a Thai funeral, the Buddhist monks chanted the funeral rites. Then, just as the wife of Prapad was wiping the tears from her face, 
who should turn up at the funeral but Prabhat himself. I just thought I'd come pay my respects, he said, asking his wife who the deceased was. It's not unusual for Thai villagers to come together at funerals. They sometimes even make an event of them replete with lots of whiskey drinking and at times enjoying homemade mini casinos. That's why Prabhat didn't want to miss the funeral. The family was of course relieved that they had their patriarch back. But now there was a pretty big question to answer. Who the hell was the mangled person in the coffin? This time the cops took more care in their investigation and within just a couple of hours they were informing another family in the village that their beloved had died. Now for a story that unfortunately does not have a happy ending. Number 10. In 2017, a 24-year-old in Peru named Watson Franklin Manduano Doroteo went to the dentist for what he thought was an uncomplicated root canal. You don't expect to die from such a small procedure, although there are plenty of stories of people dying from related infections that led to deadly sepsis. It's likely what happened here. Doroteo complained of a fever and said he felt really sick, so he was rushed to the closest hospital. It was too late, the doctor said there was nothing they could do to save him, and so off he went to the morgue. One thing we should mention here is that prior to the doctors pronouncing him dead, he'd been given a dose of diazepam, aka Valium. As you know, this drug can make a person a little bit sleepy but not usually so sleepy you look dead. In this case, there was an open coffin, family and friends of Doroteo went to pay their respects, some of them bending down into the coffin to kiss his forehead when suddenly one of those people jumped back in shock. He moved, shouted the person, he's moving. It was true, others crowded around and saw that Doroteo's chest was moving. They rushed him straight to the hospital, but unfortunately he didn't make it through the night. The family was less than pleased, and so asked the authorities to investigate. Had he pulled through and no one noticed, he would have been buried alive. We'll talk about that soon, but first we'll have a look at a few more close calls. Number 9. In February 2014, a 78-year-old man named Walter Williams took what seemed to be his last breath. He was at his home in Lexington, Mississippi, when the doctor told the family that he was dead. He was subsequently sent to Porter and Son's funeral home and that's where he was when things started to get weird. The staff was preparing to embalm him, which means draining his blood and pumping a highly toxic chemical solution through his veins to help preserve the body. One of the chemicals was formaldehyde, which if pumped into a living person would have rather nasty consequences. It would be extremely painful and since the formaldehyde makes red blood cells disintegrate, the person would become very, very sick. In a minute, there would be likely blood coming out of various orifices and the person would suffer cardiac arrest. The staff at the funeral home had just gotten the embalming equipment ready. At their side was a body bag containing Mr. Williams. Then they got the shock of their lives. The bag started moving. One of them later told the US media, we got him into the embalming room and we noticed his legs beginning to move, like kicking. He was rushed straight to the hospital and he was pronounced very much alive. His family arrived at the hospital and celebrations ensued. As for what happened, the doctor said it must have been a case of his pacemaker stopping and starting up again. That and the drugs he'd been taking, it was a case of what they call Lazarus Syndrome, in reference to that guy that Jesus brought back from the dead. Williams got two good weeks with his family and then passed away from natural causes. His nephew told the press, it was a two-week miracle for me and I enjoyed every minute of it and my family did too. There aren't too many cases where the deceased comes back to life and went on to live for many more years. But this next guy did just that. Number 8. Every October 2nd in a village in England called Braffing, the people celebrate what they called Old Man's Day. That's because on that day in 1571, a man named Matthew Wall was being taken in a coffin down the street toward the graveyard. Somewhere along the way, one of the pallbearers slipped and the coffin went tumbling to the ground. It was then that everyone heard a banging sound coming from the coffin, and when they opened it, there was Mr. Wall alive and well. He was apparently very grateful to get a second shot at life and he went on to live another 24 years. As you'll see later, being declared dead and buried alive back then was not all that uncommon. Now we'll ask you a question. Have you ever morbidly wondered what your own funeral would look like? Who would turn up? Or more to the point, who wouldn't? Who'd be weeping and who'd be secretly smiling? Number 7. It seemed that a few people throughout history have wanted to know just that and one of them was a 66-year-old Chinese man named Zhang Diang. In 2016, he got the idea to stage his own funeral. In China, funerals aren't just about saying goodbye, but they give you a good idea about how things will go in the afterlife. If a lot of people turn up, that might show that in the afterlife things will be pretty good for you since you were liked in the real world. Reports say that Mr. Diang was pretty upset with his funeral since about 20 of his close friends and relatives were a no-show. His family didn't even hire one of China's most famous professional mourners. A Serbian man named Vuk Peric wasn't so disappointed when he staged his own funeral in 1997. 
He watched from a distance as people cried and then, pleased with the amount of earnest mourning, he walked right into the ceremony and started shaking people's hands. The best fake funeral story is that of an eccentric American businessman named Timothy Dexter. He made a ton of money after the American Revolutionary War, but it seems he was paranoid about people taking advantage of him. To ameliorate his fears that people were only friendly to him to get some cash, he staged his own funeral. He went to the effort of writing his own moving obituary and then got busy sending out a bunch of invitations and it was reported he built a grandiose tomb in a fine mahogany coffin before faking his own death. 3,000 people turned up and Dexter was pleased to see many people crying, especially his own son, who was in a bit of a state. During the after-funeral service at his huge house, Dexter walked into the kitchen where he found his wife and she didn't look the least bit sad. He proceeded to cane her for her transgression while others at the funeral, still rather shocked that the focus of their tears was alive, watched on in horror. Now you've had your fill of funny stories, there's something absolutely tragic. Number 6. This case involved a 20-year-old woman from the US named Tamisha Beauchamp. She suffered from cerebral palsy and some other medical conditions and that's why paramedics turned up to her house in 2020. They soon said she was dead, but she wasn't. Nonetheless, Beauchamp ended up in the funeral home and was about to be embalmed when one of the staff saw her chest moving. What's so tragic in this case is that she had suffered brain damage because the paramedics thinking she was dead didn't give her oxygen. Because of this, she died again a couple of months later. Had they given her oxygen, she might well have survived. The family said in a statement, this is the second time our beloved Tamisha has been pronounced dead, but this time she isn't coming back. Okay, so what does happen if you're embalmed alive? Number 5. The Answer Her legs were moving. She had convulsions, her body was shaking. Now I understand the formalin was simply eroding her body from the inside. That doesn't sound very nice at all. We're going a bit off topic here, but you need to know the truth. The victim was named Katerina Fedgaeva, a Russian girl who was just 27 years old. She'd been in the hospital to have some ovarian cysts removed, which should have been a very safe procedure. Only it seemed instead of getting saline in her veins, she got something called formalin, a very potent solution that contains formaldehyde. The Washington Post reported that she was embalmed alive, although other reports say the solution got into her system another way. Either way, she started feeling really ill and looked at her mom and said, Mom, I'm dying. She was right. Her organs failed and that was it. Game over. As we said, there was some disagreement as to how the formalin got into her system. It's so toxic that she wouldn't have needed it to go straight through her veins for it to kill her. She might well have just been exposed to it. Nonetheless, a US mortician said, I can only imagine that it would have felt like a burning sensation. You're being ripped apart on a molecular level from the inside out. Something you need to understand to fully appreciate the rest of the show is that the first embalming of a supposedly dead person through the veins was in the 17th century by a Dutch man named Dr. Friedrich Rausch. Formaldehyde was first used in the procedure in the mid-19th century. But first, here's a happier tale. Number 4. This case happened in 2019 and almost saw a Thai woman named Pinit Sopajorn getting cremated alive. She was about five minutes away from hitting the flames at her funeral in the province of Udon Thani. She'd been ill for some time with something called toxic goiter. It killed her in the hospital, or at least that's what doctors wrote on the death certificate. Her body was transferred to the morgue and later to the temple where Thai folks usually let the deceased in their coffin sit for a few days as the soul passes on to the next life. The last day of the funeral is cremation day. So Panit, who was 70 when the doctors pronounced her dead, was put into a cooling coffin so her family and friends could say goodbye as she passed to the other side. She was inside this air-conditioned coffin for three days and didn't make so much as a squeak. After the third day, her cooling coffin was disconnected from the mains and it was taken to the temple for cremation. And that's where her beloved husband, Tawit, had to perform a kind of ceremonial wash of her hands. He was actually last in the queue since all close family members got a go at it. When he stepped up to the coffin and grabbed her, she opened her eyes. <laughs> We can't emphasize enough how much Thais believe in ghosts. People were in utter shock, but she got the help she needed and was soon back home. To prevent bad luck from descending on any of the people at the funeral, they still went ahead and burned the coffin. Okay, now we have another question for you. How shocked do you think you'd be if you woke up at your own funeral? Number 3. We might know the answer to this question because of a case that happened in Russia in 2011. The 49-year-old Fagilyu Mukametsanov had been having chest pains for some time when she was first admitted to the hospital. Holding her hand at her bedside was her devoted husband, Fagili. 
He was told by the doctors that she'd had a heart attack and there was nothing they could do to save her. Fagili accepted that and soon he was arranging her funeral. He insisted that there be an open coffin. Fast forward a couple days and Fagili was wearing his Sunday best and being consoled by family and friends. He walked up to the coffin to have one last look and was surprised to see signs of life, later telling the media her eyes fluttered. But as you can imagine, this was quite an ordeal for his wife, who sat up and started screaming. She was rushed to the hospital, but after a short time she was pronounced dead. The British media said it was the shock that killed her this time, although you can never be too sure if the British tabloids aren't exaggerating or embellishing a story. Fagili was understandably upset, telling the media I'm very angry and want answers. She wasn't dead when they said she was and they could have saved her. In this next case, someone actually had a video camera switched on when the dead person awoke. Number 2. The victim was Rosa Isabel Cespires Caliaca a young Peruvian woman who'd been in a car accident in April 2022 and was later pronounced dead. A huge crowd turned up to her funeral, but at some point during the burial rites, young Rosa started banging on the coffin. When her family opened it, she was indeed alive. She was taken to a hospital where she succumbed to her injuries a second time. <laughs> Yet again, the family was furious and demanded an investigation. Okay, we guess it's time to talk about perhaps the darkest or second darkest aspect of what can go wrong at a funeral. Number 1. In 2017, a 24-year-old Indian girl named Rachna Sisodia was pulled out of a funeral pyre in northern India. She'd gone missing from her house and after the family went looking for her, they heard she was with a guy to whom she'd gotten married. Only at some point she'd gotten sick and after a stint in the hospital was said to have died from cardiorespiratory arrest and acute respiratory distress. But then during her funeral someone claimed she was moving and in fact was alive. They dragged her off the pyre and later the family asked for an investigation. An autopsy revealed that there were bits of ash in her windpipe and lungs, meaning she might have breathed it in. A police spokesperson said if a person is dead, such particles cannot reach the lungs and windpipe. So the doctors concluded that the woman was burnt alive on the pyre. If you think this kind of thing could never happen, in 2021, workers in Argentina were just about to send an 89-year-old's coffin down the conveyor belt into the crematorium fire. Before the lid was closed, the daughter of the woman thought she saw signs of life. The workers took another look and agreed. The daughter then sent a message to her relatives, I just want to let you know that mom is still alive. In the end, we were in the crematorium room and we saw her vital signs. A similar thing happened in China in 2021 when a man was being transported to the crematorium. He woke up just before he was loaded into the van. The whole thing was caught on video. One of the workers jumped back and shouted, Alive! Did you see that? Alive! After the Shanghai Supervisory Commission and the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection got involved, five people were fired from their jobs. This guy was very, very close to being burned alive. His case begs the question, how many people weren't spotted moving and did get burned or buried alive? And as a bonus, let's talk about your worst nightmare. Bonus. Can you imagine waking up in a coffin? That's what happened in 2015 to a 16-year-old named Nancy Perez. She was buried alive in Honduras, but shortly after the funeral ceremony, her husband heard banging coming from the mausoleum. She'd been pregnant with this kid at the time of her death, and they were so much in love that she was buried with her wedding dress on. Sometimes, just after their marriage, she started foaming at the mouth at her home and collapsed and died. When her husband heard the banging, he called some of her family members and they got busy smashing the concrete mausoleum where she was confined. Her husband later told the press, As I put my hand on her grave, I could hear noises inside. I heard banging and then I heard a voice. She was screaming for help. When they finally got to the coffin, they saw the girl had smashed the glass viewing window. She was rushed to the hospital, but was soon pronounced dead again. If this story couldn't get any stranger, the press reported that the reason she had foamed at the mouth that day was that she'd heard gunfire outside her house and had a panic attack. When her parents saw her looking somewhat zombie-like, they didn't immediately call the doctor, but asked an exorcist to relieve her of her demons. Time was wasted and needless to say, the exorcism did not help. Doctors later said the panic attack may have induced something called cataplexy attack, which brings on a sudden loss of voluntary muscle movement. It was this that temporarily stopped her heart. We're not sure if the family believed this very reasonable medical hypothesis or instead they held on to the belief that evil spirits were at work. It's pretty certain she had woken up given the damage to the coffin's window. Her cousin also said she had scratches on her forehead and bruises on her fingers. It looked as if she tried desperately to get out of the casket and hurt herself. 
If you think this story is a one-off, think again. Back in the day when Europeans were dropping like flies from all kinds of disease and coma wasn't so well understood, many people were buried alive. There's a famous story of a Scottish woman named Marjorie Halcrow Erskine who woke up when the thieves were trying to steal the valuables she'd been buried with. There's a very similar story that was featured in the Undertaker's Journal of 1889. A woman had collapsed while dancing at a ball in New York City. Her rich husband made sure she was buried covered in pearls and diamonds, only for the Undertaker to later go back to the coffin and steal them. She woke up and scared him away, and then went out through the vault door he left open. She went on to have two kids, but the journal doesn't say what happened to the Undertaker. In fact, in an 1896 book called The Premature Burial and How It May Be Prevented, the author William Tebb lists 219 instances where people were almost buried alive from the 17th to the 19th century. All the cases were taken from medical journals, newspapers, and government reports. Catalepsy was actually blamed on a number of the cases. Tebb wrote that there were another 149 cases of definite premature burials, 10 cases of people being dissected before actual death, and another two cases where people were embalmed when they were still alive. That's why you need to know when arterial balming was invented. Apparently, some people were buried or almost buried without even a doctor's declaration of death. Some of the text in the book reads, My God, she cried, you're burying me alive. Hush, child, said her doctor, it is a mistake easily rectified. Famously, the woman named Anne Green and a man named William Dwell both woke up in the middle of their dissections. A similar story happened in the Newgate Calendar, which involved an 18th century German criminal. He woke up as the anatomist was cutting inside his open chest. The anatomist told his colleagues that they were dealing with a rascal, and if they should help the man, he'd likely only murder again. The anatomist then told the other men, I say, gentlemen, all these things considered, it is my opinion that we had better proceed in the dissection. We can't top those stories, so that's the end of the show. Now you need to watch why 2022 will be the worst year ever, or have a look at Great Depression, what was life actually like?